Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, uh, Danoon Institute of Biblical Research as well. And, wow, this is a fascinating uh, topic, something that's been on my mind for a while to, to actually go and speak about. But a very strange parallel uh, I ran across. Of course, we're looking at Jacob's Ladder here in Genesis chapter 28. Um, and many of us know the story how that Jacob had to flee uh, flee his home for because of Esau, the persecution of Esau. He is headed to his father-in-law's house, Laban, where his mother has sent him. And uh, in the process of going there, he ends up in a in a little place um, that we that would later become Jerusalem. Uh, and he sleeps there that night, and when he does, then he has this dream, and of course the dream has become something of a landmark of biblical uh, teachings, and so I'm going to share with you from this, but then I want to show you a very fascinating parallel that takes place when Jesus comes on the earth. And when I say a parallel, you really have to think deeply when you get into messages like this. So let's just start right here in verse 11 where he says, And he alighted upon a place and tarried there all night, because the sun was set. Now let me back up to verse 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went towards Haran. And he lighted upon a place, tarried there all night, because the sun was set. He took one of the stones of the place and put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. He dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land thereon where thou liest to thee, will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north and the south, and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now, I'm going to deal with two different aspects of this story, uh, and it has a lot to do with at least one portion of this, because of the word seed. Anybody that may know, uh, for example, let me just see if I can pull this up here. Um, I think I actually closed my PowerPoint there, but there is a, um, let's see here. Tovia Singer really was one of the ones that made such a to-do over the word seed. And uh, he mocks Paul because Paul says seed singular and not plural. And so then Tovia in this particular video right here was Paul a rabbi, an ignoramus or a Christian, Rabbi Tovia Singer responds. And in this particular response here, he goes into there, there's no such thing as like saying, as he put it, sheep, are you going to watch over my sheeps? And he said, you don't say that, it's um, an irregular plural. But the problem is, or what is problematic in this, is one, Paul, of course, did live back in those days, uh, and he identifies the word seed as singular versus that of plural. And Tovia, seeming he's acting as if he does know it all on that issue, uh, is completely incorrect because in the Dead Sea Scrolls, it was common, a common place for the word seed to be used as a plural. Let me see if I can play this uh, where Tovia says that at. I don't know how well it's going to play on here because of the... Hmm, it's not going to play for me right now. But, it, but at any rate, if you were to watch this video, you would actually see that. 
Um, I'll see later if I can't bring it out. But that's, that is on that particular message. If you just look it up, was Paul a rabbi, an ignoramus, or a Christian? Um, by Rabbi Tobias Singer and his response, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. But when we look at this, and I have it right here in the Dead Sea Scrolls, fragment 4Q396, and it says right there, and you know that part of the priest and the people mingle and they unite with each other and defile the holy seed. All right, that's singular right there. Zara HaKadosh. They mingle the Zara HaKadosh Ve'af Ed Zarim Im. See, and then he goes on to say, and their own seed with fornications. Now, when it comes to their seed, it is spoken about in a plural form. Zain Resh Ein Mim. And if there is a mem sofit in there, then it pluralizes the word seed, whereas the zayn resh ayn is singular. So in the Dead Sea Scrolls, even 200 years roughly before Paul ever spoke what he did, there was a clear indication between plural and singular. So no, it was not considered an irregular singular to say zarim or zara. That only comes in English, not and, of course, the Hebrew language. So I have to differ with Tovia on that, and uh, just to, to make that case in point. So when we look at this scripture here, and we read, And behold, the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, the, the, uh, thy father, the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to, to thee will I give it, and to your seed. Velezerecha which is, and to your seed. And uh, so, that of course, that just being the one issue right there, which I thought was fascinating. One thing, too, and I didn't catch this when I taught this initially, and I will bring this out. I'll go, let me go back to this real quick before we get into this parallel here. Is that when we're looking at the Dead Sea Scrolls, I used to think it was only the Levites that did this, but it wasn't. According to the uh, authors of the... Qumran, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls from Qumran, they put in there that it was the priest and of the people. That's something I did not know. The people, there were people, you know, in other words, some of the Israelites as well had mingled their seed, the holy seed, mixing it up to corrupt that bloodline is what they were trying to do. And, uh, and as it says here, and they have to unite each other and to defile the Holy Seed. They were looking to corrupt the flesh. They were looking to make a break in Jacob's lineage. And I think that is very much noteworthy. Going back up, though, to verse 12. Let's look at this again a little closer. Uh, and he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached heaven. In Hebrew, Sulam Mitzav Arza Ve Rosho, the head of the ladder, the, the very source of where the, this ladder is coming from, is from, of course, um, as, it's, as it's spoken of here, uh, Hashemaim, or Hashem, uh, Hashemimima, uh, Magia, uh, excuse me, Hashemimia which is, you know, the, this, this, this ladder, which by the word sulam, I think it's only used one time in the entire Old Testament, is almost like not a physical ladder, but it is that of um, more like a portal, a gateway. And even the angels of God, and I thought this is something that we should consider as well. I have it highlighted in yellow right here. Vechine melachi Elohim. And behold, the angels of, literally, that would be translated gods, plural. It's not a singular, the angels of the, of the gods. They're ascending and descending. Now, we do take it to be that it is the, the, the true angels of the Father that are ascending and descending. 
but it's just something that's noteworthy. And this is why I'm telling you, you want to think deeply when we're looking at this. Now, in parallel, a cross-reference of this, if you go over to the temptation that Jesus was put under when he was in the wilderness for 40 days, 40 nights, and Satan comes up to him, and we read this in chapter 4, we'll begin here with verse 6, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time you dash your foot against a stone. Actually, we really should back. Yeah, I did have it marked too. To verse 5. Because it sets the precedent of where Jesus actually is. The devil taketh him up in the, uh, into the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. It's literally the very highest point he could get to. And said unto him, If you be the Son of God, cast yourself down, for it's written, He shall give his angels charge concerning you, and, if, and, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest any time you would dash your foot against a stone. I believe that's over in the book of Psalms, if I remember right. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. And again the devil took him up into an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All things will I give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said unto him, Get you hence, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall you serve. Now just remember, I am using modern English because of the fact that I connect translates it in multiple languages, and it makes it easier for the system to detect modern English versus um, old English. As I'm saying this to you, though, and reading this, as I said, it's like a parallel because we see that Jacob finds himself in where the temple would be built in the future. Uh, we see that there is a ladder, that its head, the very source of where that ladder is at, according to Genesis, the Rosh, right there, there's your root of the word, Veroshu, excuse me, Verosho, its head, the very source of where that Sulam is coming from, is from heaven. It's almost like there is a portal, some kind of gateway. The, a way, this is one of the ways that they, that the angels of God would actually come down to earth. It's right there. And then Satan, in this contrast, maybe that would be a, not so much a parallel, but a contrast. And again, thinking deeply, and as you look at this, comes and and not only does he take Jesus to the pinnacle of the temple, wants him to throw himself off, but then he goes to this exceedingly high mountain, shows him all the kingdoms of the world, and he says, "I'll give it to you if you just worship me." But we're going to look, we're going to examine this from the Hebrew Matthew, because the Hebrew Matthew is where we're going to really get that contrast or parallel, so to speak, because God says to Jacob. You know, when he shows him this place, you know, where you lie, I will give it to you and to your seed. Now, that was Jerusalem. But then Satan comes and offers the whole world to Jesus. Let's watch what it says in the Hebrew Matthew, though. All right. Chapter 4, and let's see. We'll begin with verse maybe six here, or excuse me, five. Then Satan took him to the holy city, placed him on the highest point in all the temple, and said to him, If you are God, jump down, for it is written, He has commanded His angels in regard to you to keep you in all your ways, etc. Jesus answered him again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. So Satan took him to an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the earth and their glory. And said to him, All these things will I give you if you bear your head to me. Now that's what really caught my attention. If you bear your head to me, 
Now that's the way they translate the, the Hebrew version of this. And it says in Hebrew, Ve'yomer lo kol ele itan lecha'im tapura eli. So literally, he's saying to him, and, and we use this word to, be, to bear your head, but it's, it's, it's fascinating. It's almost like to make known the source is what he's saying. Make known your source. Or we, we think in, in, in English that it would be to worship or to bow down. But the Hebrew Matthew doesn't give us that type of word. Perhaps if we look at this from Greek, we might consider that as just to be a form of worship or to bow before Satan. But I believe it was much deeper because when we look from the Hebraic version of Matthew, now granted, the Hebraic version that the that Shem Tov used was not nearly as old as maybe the Greek manuscript, but we know that it was passed down from Hebrew to Hebrew to Hebrew. We know the early church fathers taught that Matthew did write in the Hebrew language. So the question has to be, if this be the case here, why would he say to him to bear your head? But yet when I look at Genesis and I see that there's a very interesting parallel. In other words, when I say a parallel, God says to Jacob, I'm going to give you this place here and to your seed. So he was promising to give it not only to Jacob, but also Zerachah. That's one singular seed that he's going to give this place to. Satan is coming over here. He's claiming that he has all of it. Not just Jerusalem where he had just taken him, but the entire world. And he'll give it to him as well under one condition. And according to the Hebrew, Matthew, if you bear your head, if you make known to me basically the path you used to get here. Now you can begin to understand the parallel, right? Because what were the angels doing? They were ascending and descending upon this sulam, sulam etzav aratza, there was a vehine, he says, vehine sulam mutzav aratza. Behold, there was a ladder that was set up on the earth. The head, ve'rosho magia hashemayma. The very head of it, the very source of where this ladder was coming from was, was and not a physical ladder, mind you, but this, this, this gateway was coming from the heavens there. And the angels were ascending and descending on this. Now see, Satan wasn't stupid. He takes Jesus to the very temple itself, goes to the highest pinnacle and is telling Jesus to throw himself off. He said, for your God, they'll catch you. And think about that one, right? Think about that for a moment. They'll catch. If you dash your foot against a stone, they're there to bear you up. So in other words, as you're, if you would be coming and going from this realm like the other angels are going, you know, if, if anything went wrong, the true Father would be there to take care of you. So he brings him there, and he's ready to throw him off, and so that doesn't move Jesus. So then he takes him up to this exceedingly high mountain, shows him all the kingdoms of the world. Because you've got to remember what took place there when Jacob was there was the promise was this was going to be given to him. Not only would the city be given, but notice too in verse 14, And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad the west, the east, the north, the south, and, and to thee and to thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So you get it? Now in Matthew... Satan takes him up, shows him all the glories of the world. The same thing that happened with Jacob. Not only was he said that he and his seed would, would be given this, but they also go to the entire world. Satan takes 
Jesus to the pinnacle, the temple, the highest point and everything. He's making a point. There's a gateway here. The angels ascend and descend on this gateway here, right? And, and he knows that God has promised this to Jesus, to the seed of Jacob, that faith seed, that one that would believe. But at the same time, he says to Jesus, I'll give you all of this if you just bear your head to me. Now we read in the Greek, if you bow down to me. But in the Hebrew, it's not so much that he was telling him to bow, but to reveal how he got here. I cannot help but wonder if Satan didn't know, well he, well, he definitely knew that this was the place where the angels ascend and descend. But Jesus came in a way that wasn't through that Sulam. He wasn't coming through the ladder that everybody else thought about, Sulam. He came a different way. And that drove that devil crazy. But if you really are spiritually minded, I think you'll pick all this up yourself and you'll see what I'm talking about. This is one of the most fascinating scriptures I have ever seen in my life. And it just reveals a lot. I'm Stephen Benin. You're watching Israeli News Live. And listen, if it is a blessing to you, the work that we do here, and you want to help support the work we do, we greatly appreciate it. You can visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can donate online uh, right there just by clicking right, donate under the online, click right there. It takes you to where you can donate directly. And any kind of credit card is perfectly uh, able to be done. And, of course, our mailing address to Noon Institute. P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. Please do keep our family in prayer. Um, we have been on a journey when it comes to um, the events that have happened to our life here in the last couple of months. We're going to be uh, discussing these things in the near future. Uh, but we've been on a journey to try to unravel what Satan has done to, to our family and how he is really trying to dis, to attack and destroy uh, this ministry. And so we need your prayers and support in that regards there. So God bless you and thank you for listening. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live.